Captain Bomb, do you? Sheep and the goat judgment. And so when Christ returns, he will hold this sheep and goat judgment to decide from the world who will be allowed into his millennial kingdom. People in tribulation will have shown by their actions whether they wanted to align with God or with the world. And so when it comes to the millennial kingdom here, everyone who enters into it will be there because of their desire to follow God. However, the millennium is not heaven or a state of sinless perfection. These people from the sheep and goat judgment will still be coming into this world in their, their natural bodies. They'll still be able to give birth in the millennium. They can even still sin in the millennium and even die in the millennium. And so after a thousand years, you've got these folks or their children or their grandchildren, their great, great, great grandchildren, all living in this kingdom. And so then this final battle demonstrates who truly wants to be with the Lord and abide in this holy presence and ultimately that his judgment on them if they don't want that it's just and so there's this final battle here and the Lord wins in verses 9 and verse 10 once again this battle is over alright okay so I started here where he talks about Jesus Christ returns and then there's going to be people in their natural bodies and having children. You know what that means. Sex, sex, sex right there. Jesus is going to come and there's going to be sex, sex, and more sex. Alright, so... <clears throat> to hell with what the Bible says. According to this guy can't believe the Bible. You gotta believe him and his ridiculous doctrine of sex, sex, sex. And that's all that's all these guys preach. And that's all they're gonna be in their glorified bodies, like they're sixteen years old again, and just having sex, sex, and more sex. They're gonna have dominion over the women. And they're going to have multiple wives. That's his imagination, okay? And there's no way to get around that. You're lying to yourself to say anything else, really. Yeah. So in 1 John chapter 2, it says, Love not the world neither the things that are in the world if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world and the world passes away in the lust thereof but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever the world passes away and the lust thereof okay so when Jesus comes it is the end of the world the disciples came to Jesus privately asking him what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. So when Jesus comes, it's the end of the world. In verse 29, the sun is darkened, the moon shall not give her light, the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. It's the end of the world. And then shall appear... Jesus in the clouds of heaven and he shall send his angels to gather together the elect it's the end of the world All right, at the end of the world see the world passes away and the lust thereof alright <laughs> It could not be more obvious. Alright, so 2 Peter 3. 
But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise, and the element shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Alright, so there's no possibility that this world will survive the end of the world. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for a new heavens. And a new earth wherein, where, wherein dwelleth righteousness. I, it's unbelievable. It's as if these guys have no idea what the Bible says. They're preying upon people that don't read their Bible. And they, <laughs> there's a lot of them. And you know what that means. There's a lot of people that don't read their Bible. All right, well, he's not the only one. You know, I've shown others. So let me show you another one. And reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Now here uh, is based upon our best understanding of, uh, of Scripture. The inhabit... Our best understanding? Is that what he said? Our... Has he got a turd in his pocket? ...of the earth during this millennial reign of Christ will be church-aged church age believers um, who were raptured into heaven and returned with Christ. You have Old Testament believers who uh, appear to have been resurrected after the tribulation period as well as those believers who died during the tribulation. There will also be natural human beings, mortals, that lived through the tribulation that did not take the mark of the beast. Now, those resurrected... All right, so... He's got all kinds of stuff going on here. But what he's really saying is that he's going to be <clears throat> in his glorified body, living among mortals. And he's going to be having sex, sex, and more sex. Dominion, power, and authority over the women. That's what he's saying. Now he's imagining all this. There's no way to get around it. That's exactly what he's saying. Now, in 2 Peter 3, remember when I quoted here about the day of God and the, the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night? We go very top, very um, up, up in the, the, the third verse, right? Knowing this first, that there should come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust knowing this first scoffers walking after their own lust these guys are scoffers of God and his word they are mocking God Jude 1 verse 18 how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust this is what these guys are preaching they're mockers and scoffers of the word of God they're imagining that they are having or that they are going to have authority over the women and they're going to be having sex, sex, sex in their glorified bodies. Now, first of all, let me show you. Oops. Jesus has asked um, about the resurrection, and he says in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage. Yeah, that means there's no sex. So that can only mean that in the resurrection, it's much greater than sex. That's probably hard for these guys to understand. 
And that's exactly what Jesus is saying. Things are going to be much better, much greater than sexual relations, okay? And <laughs> look, the, all we're really doing is repeating history. This is what happened before the flood. Right? Now, let's go back to here and we see let's do it this way. For in the days that were before the flood they were eating and drinking, marrying and given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. All right, so they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving in marriage. And here we see, before the flood, that men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, and that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and took them wives of all which they chose. That means these guys had multiple wives. They were having sex with whoever and as many as they wanted. Exactly the dream of these two gentlemen right here. And it's a dream shared by many men. This idea that they will be in their glorified bodies living among natural uh, mortal this guy says mortal natural human beings right there mortals he's going to be glorified and he's going to be ruling and have authority over the women that's his dream same with this young fella right and that's exactly what was going on in the days of Noah all right notice that right here they took them wives of all which they chose and the Lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he also is flesh yet his days shall be in 120 years okay so this is without mentioning the violence, all right, and the, the evilness of uh, whatever, you know, the corruption, the, you know, all that sort of stuff. <clears throat> this is solely mentioning this right here, the fact that they took wives of all which they chose. This idea of multiple wives, this is, this is it. Now, we get further elaboration, but it it's only mentioned that they took wives of all which they chose. Now, that entails all kinds of bad stuff, all kinds of evilness and wickedness. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man, for he is flesh. Okay. And this is the same thing that these guys are preaching. This idea that they will take wives of all which they choose. <laughs> and this is exactly what we're warned against. Right? Let's go back to Matthew 24. What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and the very first thing Jesus says is take heed that no man deceive you for many shall come in my name saying I Jesus am Christ and shall deceive many these guys say Jesus is Christ and they deceive many. 